here's the question that I want to ask right now. Why is repentance and faith so hard? Why is there so much violence involved? Why are there so many people seeking to enter in who won't be able to? Why? Now listen very carefully. I'm going to tell you another verse. This verse comes from the very end of the Bible. And listen very closely. As the Bible is finished up, and the last book of the New Testament is coming to completion, and the last thing the Lord Jesus Christ wants to leave with this world is this. Let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who desires to take the water of life, let the one who desires take the water of life without price. Let me tell you something. Is the door into heaven, the kingdom of God, is it narrow? Yeah, it's narrow. It's very narrow. But I'll tell you this, it is wide enough and broad enough and open enough for every single person who desires to go through it, to go through it. Guaranteed, folks. Everyone, if you're thirsty, go through and drink. God hasn't shut the door to you being saved, just the opposite. He throws it wide open for all who are thirsty. He says, if you have a desire to come in, come in. Well, here's the thing. Does he say that? He says, come in. If it's so easy, don't you wonder about this? If it's so easy, why does it sound so hard? Right? If it's so easy, here's a door we're beckoned to go through. Kingdom of God in our midst. All who desire can go right through. So easy. And yet, it sounds so hard. Here's the thing. The door of the kingdom of God is like a monkey trap. Now, I know some of you have heard about this. Listen to me. This monkey trap deal that I'm going to tell you about, it's no urban legend. This thing is real. This thing is real, and monkeys are really like this. Now, listen. Trappers, you know, obviously, if you want to kill a monkey because you want to eat the monkey, you don't have to be concerned about preserving the monkey. You just stick an arrow through it and put it on your plate. But for those who want to capture monkeys for zoos and that type of thing where they want the monkey unharmed, they have a way of trapping them. Well, how? Well, basically, they take a gourd or a coconut or a bottle... Let's use the bottle in the illustration. It's a good one. They basically get a bottle that has an opening in it that a monkey can get his hand in. And they put nuts inside. Delicious nuts. Just the kind the monkeys love to eat. Well, what happens? The monkey puts his hand through the neck of the bottle where he can fit. And he reaches in there and he grabs hold of one of the nuts. Well, there's a problem now. Now that the nut's in the hand, and he's closed fist, it's too big to come out of the neck of the bottle. Now you would think, okay, monkey dropped the nut, monkey goes free. That's exactly right. But guess what they found? The monkey will never drop the nut. And so even when the trapper comes, the monkey sees him and he's just going crazy trying to get away. He still won't drop the nut. Trapper's got him. In the bag he goes. Now you know what? I tell you again, this is no urban legend. This is how they trap. I read about it on the internet. I, I've never seen it done, but I take it on good account that this actually happens. The doorway to the kingdom of God is just the same. It's big enough for you to get through if you tear out those eyes 
and drop those nuts of repentance that Christ calls you to drop. That's the whole point. If you don't tear out the eye, you don't fit through. If you don't drop the nut, you don't go through. Listen to one of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. Luke 14.33 It's big enough for you to get through if you dump the stuff. But if there's, if there's even one thing in your life that you're not willing to get rid of, one idol in your life you won't give up, you can't go through. Idols and sin are too big to go through that door. You are willing or you are called to go, you are asked to go, you are bid to go, you are pleaded with to go, you are commanded to go. You are commanded to repent and believe. You are commanded to go through that door. In some places, God pleads with the sinner to go through that door. In some places, God pleads through His servants to you to go through that door. He bids you. He does it in commandment. He does it in some of the most affectionate terminology imaginable. He says, He actually comes down to the level of the sinner and He says, come, let us reason together. I mean, he's, He will even reason with sinners. He bids us come. He's provided a way in. The problem is, look folks, God hasn't shut the door on anybody. The thing is, there's a nut that most people have. And you know what the thing is? The thing is, most people will give up Many things to have heaven. But they won't give up everything. They have that one or two special nuts. And they won't give it up. They will not let go. And even if they hear that there is danger, even if they hear that there is such a thing as hell, just like the monkeys when they see the trappers coming, I mean, there's the danger right in their face. This guy's going to take me a wage... A way He's going to throw me in a place that I don't want to be. And even when the sinner sees, God is going to come for me. And He's going to throw me in a place I don't want to be. Even when they see the danger, they won't let go. Why won't they let go? That's the thing. Why will the sinner not let go? Because as we find in Hebrews, what is it? Hebrews 3.3? The deceitfulness of sin. You know what, folks? When you really boil it down, you know why people won't repent? Because they don't believe. That's the issue. They don't really believe. You see, to believe a lie is to be an unbeliever. De sin is deceitful. Basically, every sinner that will not enter. Why do you have all these crowd of people that are seeking to get in and they can't get in? I'll tell you why. Because they got the nut in hand. They'll come around and they'll say, I'm trying to be saved. I'm calling upon God to be saved. Let me see your hand. Yep, that's what I thought. You can't get their hand out. Because they got the nut in there. And they'll come around and they'll be in tears. And now you know I'm calling upon the Lord and He won't save me. And I'm doing this and I'm doing that and I'm coming to church and He won't save me. You know why? Got the nut in the hand. Monkey lets go of the nut. He's out right now. You know what? 19 years ago, I had certain sins in my life I did not want to get rid of. And I knew, I knew God showed me, you are going to hell for those sins. And I knew I deserved it. And I saw it. And the danger stared me in the face. But there were certain sins I did not want to get rid of. And I'll tell you this, that very night on the 4th of July in 1990, when I opened my hand, bang, like that, I was saved. That fast. 